Hi, this is Pat Moorhead, and we are live in Las Vegas at AWS reInvent 2022 in the IBM suite, having a good time. Daniel, this event has been amazing, and it's just great to see the, I like to call it the maturation of, of the cloud. And you know, sometimes I, re I like to repeat myself, but I, I think it's important to reflect back and look at the, at the clouds, only 15 years old here, and you know, the partnerships that are required to, you know, to pull it off, the technology, hybrid, multi-cloud, all these great things is, is really making it interesting. You know, you're a little older than me, so I guess it all depends as a percentage <laughs> of our lifespan. The cloud has been around pretty much since I got out of high school. So, wow. you know, we're in different stages of our lives, but in all serious, every time we get to AWS reInvent, you always get a really good sense of sort of what the appetite is for cloud and kind of this shifting demand. We've seen hybrid at scale, we've seen AI picking up right. in a big way. We're seeing sustainability being talked about and hopefully being, uh, being measured. Um, and these are some of the big focus areas I've noticed here at this year's event, but. Uh, hey, okay. let's talk about another focus area and that's consulting. And uh, that's a great intro for our guests here. Mahmoud and Atul, great to see you. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank, Thank you. you for having us. First time 6.5 guest, this is, uh, this is wonderful. Uh, it's exciting to be here. Yeah, maybe the first uh, place to start, maybe introduce yourself, maybe talk about what you do, Mahmoud. Uh, let's start with you. Yeah, so I'm Mahmoud Almashni, and uh, I can assure you that I've been out of high school a lot longer than the, crowd, <laughs> the cloud's been around, so let's get that out of the way. <laughs> so, um, to be young. yeah, right. Um, I run our AWS business for IBM Consulting um, and really took on this role. Uh, middle of last year, so second big reInvent show in terms of us being here in a big way. Welcome. That's yeah. great. Atul? Atul, how about you? I hear, you know, we, we talked in the green room, uh, they, they're, they're really working you, but you're the customer, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> it doesn't feel like that way. <laughs> um, I manage uh, ERP platforms and application at uh, Johnson & Johnson. Perfect. And as you know, Johnson & Johnson is uh, one of the leading uh, uh, healthcare company. It operates in uh, pharmaceutical, medical devices, and consumer divisions, and uh, ships products in 175 countries. So you can well imagine uh, what kind of uh, supply chain we might be uh, operating. So just to let you know the scale, uh, the service which I manage uh, spans across 4,000 plus servers, uh, 20,000 plus changes which we perform uh, every year and uh, 10,000 plus integrations, and 95,000 jobs, which we run uh, every day to deliver products to our patients. Kind of makes our jobs look easy, sound easy, right? Our jobs are fun. <laughs> well, let's try not if they're having fun, but, yeah. it, but, but in serious, that, that I always love when the customers come on, because we, we talk to the vendors yeah. a lot, because that's our work as analysts, we tend to talk to the tech industry. Mm -hmm. Customers are such terrific proof points for how complex this really is, and they can always provide reality kind of that ground truth of the right. analyst talking to the tech about what we can do, and then the, the, the customer comes on and says, well, this is what it actually looks like. <laughs> and so, that's great. We're going to get to you, Atul, in just a minute. Mahmoud, I, I want to start with you. Being on the, you know, on the ground, leading this business with AWS, talk a little bit through your lens about this IBM-AWS partnership and how it's progressing. Yeah, so we really kind of, we, we embarked on it in 2017 and I would say we kicked it into gear in 2020 when our CEO, Arvind Krishna, took over, right? And that's when he said, we're going to lay out, you know, go at this, meet our clients where they are, and really anoint 10 strategic partners to launch into with, and one of them was AWS. So that meant investment in the millions in terms of capability, in terms of, you know, clients meeting, uh, making them lighthouse accounts, et cetera. So now, you know, fast forward a little bit. Last year, we were named the Rising Star Partner of the Year um, here at reInvent for the Americas. Um, this year, we actually picked up another couple of awards last night. Um, um, the Global Innovator Award um, was awarded to IBM, also the GSI Partner of the Year in Latin America, one of the fastest growing regions globally. Um, and now we're over you know, 15,000 certified individuals. We've got 14 competencies. So we've really established that question of the capability up front, right? Can IBM work with AWS? Um, we're one of the fastest growing uh, GSIs for AWS. And in turn, AWS will tell you that you know, we're um, one of the fastest growing SIs for them. That's yeah, really exciting and, and it, it just goes to show how much can change so quickly. Yeah. And you know, Daniel and I, you know, we just stand back and kind of in awe on how much change, how quickly has transpired 
uh, inside of, of IBM. So a lot of announcements this week yeah. uh, from IBM here at, at reInvent. Uh, we saw software and IBM Consulting yes. had some uh, announcements uh, as well. And I'm sure you know you love all your children the same, but uh, what was the biggest announcement? And maybe talk about how in the end, how it benefits clients. So one of the biggest announcements for us from an IBM Consulting perspective is our platform services capability on AWS that we're launching here, right? And um, a tool, and, and J&J was nice enough to almost be our guinea pigs pilot to, <laughs> to work it out there for us, right? Because it's a major proof point. You want to make sure it works at a client. And in a nutshell, um, this journey to the cloud, as you guys were talking about up front, it, it's not a, a drive to the neighborhood grocery store, right? It's, it takes years, the complexity, hybrid cloud environments, on-prem, in the cloud, et cetera. So there's a lot of you know, nuances that come with that, right? Applications being the backbone of any digital business. So you need to make sure you monitor that. So we brought together a platform made up of AWS services, IBM consulting assets, IBM software, AI-based, leverages a database of over a thousand implementations to kind of take care of some of the alert fatigue, take care of proactively uh, identifying problems on the system, et cetera, so that this way people can actually focus on that journey to the cloud and not just getting tagged every time there might be every little situation that needs to get addressed. And it really goes a long way to avoiding like downtime for our clients, which is the biggest thing in this journey. They all want to do the journey, they all want to do it faster, but everybody reminds us, you know, I, I can't afford the downtime, right? Which is understandable. So this gives us an opportune moment to kind of turn to a tool. I mean, so the uh, IBM platform services on AWS, I think you said you're the guinea pig. So <laughs> I think that's what my mood said. Um, so talk a little bit about that. I talk a little bit about, you know, why you opted to, to take that uh, early, uh, yeah. that beta, alpha, mm -hmm. and kind of how that you're seeing that, you know, become a bigger opportunity for Johnson & Johnson. So, um, my job, like I said, we do so many changes. It's a complex technology stack which uh, which we manage, right? Uh, and generally, I try to break it into three parts: core infrastructure, platform, and applications. All right, and observability in these each one of these areas is the key point, and uh, the right information at the right time to be available, especially to our L1 and L2 yeah. team, is very important because if they they don't have the right insight, they will be making wrong decision in process making uh, human errors, and ultimately our customers will be impacted. So what what we did with IBM, we already have them as a strategic partner in um, application management business. Uh, we started looking at the problem which we were facing and uh, started designing, uh, actually did a lot of POCs, and one of, one of them we just put it in production, the version one of that, which is called Mobius, which is actually correlating all the events at uh, this, these technology stacks so that our L1, L2 teams have right information at the right time and can make the right decision so that we are not having so many disruptions and outages uh, uh, and customers are not impacted. Yeah, observability is really, I mean, in the analyst, I mean, it, it keeps us really busy. I mean, we've seen this fractalization of not only the infrastructure, but a fractalization of even applications. I mean, mm -hmm. applications used to be very monolithic stovepipe, but now you might be hitting, you know, four, five, six APIs at the same time, mm -hmm. and they all have to be orchestrated together. There's just a lot more that can go wrong now. So, um, question for you, you talked a little bit about uh, the benefits, but can you extrapolate a little bit more? What are the benefits that this solution is bringing uh, to you? So, uh, I actually joke with my team, you know, uh, whenever I try to uh, ask for the data, like what is actually impacting us? Right. Uh, and it actually, it, it's, uh, it takes almost a month to, you know, co correlate the data and actually make sense out of it. Even to, to de uh, devise a service improvement plan. Just imagine if that is available to you right at the click of the button. Yeah. Your, you know, root cause analysis capabilities goes to a totally different level. So your chances of, uh, you know, committing errors also go down substantially, and we are seeing the impact of that. Our outages are actually going down. So as we mature with the uh, with the, these capabilities we have built, I think uh, uh, the opportunities are you know endless. Yeah, it's a great it's a great example of the power of observability. Yeah. You and I have talked a lot about it on our show, 
uh, we've been really following closely across the landscape and watching IBM among several other companies have really entered in a big way mm -hmm. into the observability space. And yeah. you're seeing like, hey, we got all this data, all these applications, this environment, we've got to make sure it's all being managed, run, and then of That's course right. you want to layer in AI, automate as many things as possible. You're, Infrastructure is just massive a tool, and mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you're a great example of the real challenge that companies have. And mm -hmm. so, by the way, thanks for giving us that background, M M Mahmoud. I want to pivot back to you to kind of give us one last thing. Since we're here at reInvent, the IBM AWS partnership is clearly moving in the right direction. But give us, can you glean any look into the future? Kind of where is this going to head? What kind of advancements? What's next? Yeah, I mean, uh, we actually just wrapped up an exercise on a joint three-year plan together um, going forward. So how are we going to continue this rocket growth through 2025, right? And now that we got our base capabilities, if you will, out of the way and establish that in the marketplace, um, we're really looking at bringing forward those industry-specific offerings with AWS. If you ask AWS, they'll tell you, why do you look to a GSI? We look to a GSI to bring us industry expertise, right? Um, from our perspective, we go to market by industry, so it's perfect. Um, as we're looking to scale, it's going to be both in terms of personnel as well as asset-based capabilities. So focusing on bringing solutions to healthcare, life sciences, financial services, uh, manufacturing, travel and hospitality. So um, that's where we're really going to be focused on over the next couple of years, and hopefully we'll have more announcements throughout next year and even again here at reInvent next year. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, us analysts sometimes want to, you know, look at everything in horizontal, but in, in the end, there's no business out there that's horizontal. It's and they, they want vertical solutions, and I, I do understand the economies of scale that you get from having horizontal solutions. Yeah, absolutely. You apply to vertical solutions, but uh, in the end, that, that's really where they want their help. Uh, I just want to end, uh, thank you both for coming on the show, Mabud and Atul. Um, uh, congratulations on the awards you won. I almost ran into them on the way in here. <laughs> I was aware of them, uh, but that's great. And I know you know you just want to keep uh, pushing the puck forward. And I'm really impressed at the speed uh, at which uh, the company has has changed. It's good to see the rewards that that the market is providing you and just focusing on those clients. A tool. Thanks for keeping all of us honest. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> uh, IBM industry analysts and just rolling your sleeves up and making it happen. I'll tell you what. You you have a role in shaping this industry. You know, you're not just a statistic and a revenue number. You help shape the direction that these trillion dollar uh, market cap uh, companies. I think it's 50 trillion if I look across uh, all of them and where they put their investments mm -hmm. uh, in at the end of the day and how they help, uh, how you help them help help you. So thanks for <laughs> yeah. coming on the show. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks for well, having me. Well, you know, that's the whole process of the cloud growing up from being a teenager to an adult. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, everybody. Well, thanks so much for tuning in to the 6.5 here in the IBM suite at AWS reInvent 2022 for Patrick, for myself, for our awesome guests, tune into all those other episodes, hit the subscribe button, but we're saying goodbye. We'll see you later.